Yeah, I know I'm I know I'm really late with this review, but uh, I've been kind of busy back back in high school again and you know, doing all my work, so you know, I have to restrict doing these vlogs Fridays now because I'm back back in high school. Anyways, Raw has fine has reached its 900th episode, and how was it? It sucked. And I I don't know how, like, how, I don't know what they were thinking of when they were making that episode, but they just, they, they had a good, they had like a good concept, like ha they had good match concepts, but, man, yeah, I got my grape juice to drink away the, the horribleness of that show. Anyways, this isn't re this, re this this really didn't have any con uh, like a the basic theme to the show. It's basically just another episode of Raw, but mixed in with SmackDown and NXT superstars. So uh, I'm just gonna run through what I saw because man, that was it was a bad show. Anyways, first up we had um first Bret Hart came out and. He was talking and, and you know about Rob making it to the 900th episode. Then um, Kane came out and started insulting uh, Brett. And if you don't know already, Kane Kane had a heel turn at SummerSlam. I mean, oh shocker! Kane's a heel now. So he comes out, starts insulting Bret Hart, and the Undertaker's mentioned. And and this is the part where like. You learn that the Undertaker and Kane have the abilities to teleport. Like, the lights will turn off, and when it turns on, they will be standing in the ring. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever seen that, uh, them do that before. But I'm pretty sure. I don't remember for some reason. But anyways, they can teleport now. So, uh, they teleport, and then uh, Kane and Kane walks away and then the general raw manager like pings a message and it, and he announces a match between Bret Hart and the Undertaker and I'm just going like cuz I thought the appropriate match would be like Bret Hart versus Kane but then like I don't know this this whole show is fucking stupid anyways uh Next up was a triple was a triple threat tag team match between Kofi and crap. I wrote his name down, but it, it got erased. I forgot. And it was who else? It was Daniel Bryan and Caval, Kofi and some guy, and Miz and his guy. I, I, I don't know. I don't watch NXT. So, anyways. Um, it was an okay match, and The Miz and his team won. And they're still continuing the feud between Miz and Daniel Bryan, but... And, you know, it's kind of obvious that, like, Daniel Bryan will eventually win the U.S. Championship. I mean, like, usually I don't predict this kind of stuff, but it's kind of predictable. Like, they're not going to give The Miz two titles at, at the same time. That would, that would be stupid. Okay, Raw? That would be stupid. Okay. Anyways. Then there was a Divas match, but... I say, whatever. And... Then my sister. My sister was watching with me at the same time. And she doesn't usually watch. And, like, she kind of has, like, her favorites. Like, she likes Beth Phoenix. And among the dudes, she likes Chris Jericho. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. My sister likes Chris Jericho. And... She told me to watch the match, like, but the DVR kind of, like, uh, messed up, so I only got, like, the end of it, and it was, um, it was Melina, Melina beat, um, the women's tag team champion team, I forgot, I, I don't know, I have to take better notes next time, and they got... And Melina got re-challenged to Night of Champions, like, a uni- Crap, I can't remember this right now. But they, 
they challenged they challenged her but Melina said she would do it if it was a lumberjack match and then like the raw the raw divas came out and then like okay that, that was my reaction okay anyways next up the there was a preview for legendary <laughs> uh, expect a review on that film later then Chris Jericho and the Nexus um, start talking before their match because eventually there's gonna be a five-on-five -five elimination match between Nexus and some members of Team WWE and then Nexus is worried about like them falling apart because Skip Sheffield broke his ankle and I, I didn't research so I don't know if that's an actual injury and Darren them kicking out Darren Young so Wade Barrett assures them that he's gonna that he's gonna make the team look again by winning WWE Champion <laughs> and so and Jericho when he comes in like he says he's gonna leave again if he doesn't win again this is like the the billionth time that he said he's gonna leave and he's not gonna leave I mean like if he, he he was gonna leave, he would have left by like back then. I mean, I honestly don't, don't understand why he keeps saying he's gonna leave. Just like, just I don't know. Maybe some really young kid in like some young kid in the middle of nowhere is probably thinking so. Chris Jericho's leaving. No, but then like other people already know this. Like, I want him to win. Like. I'm a Jericho fan, Y two J, and I want him to win. But come on, man, you gotta stop with this stupid gimmick. And then after that, Mo there was a tag team match between Morrison, uh, Jim Morrison, no, Jim Morrison. Uh, what was his name again? I'm, I listened to the Doors earlier this earlier today, so. John Morrison, there you go, my bad. Jim Morrison's the actual singer. And then our truth also came on, on his team, like, yeah. And then there were versus the SmackDown heel team of Cody, Dash and Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre. This match never happened. They both disqualified each other because, like, they hated each other. So, that would have been a good match, but then, like, Sometimes Vince McMahon pisses me off like he this is the basic night like they had a good match idea going on and then they just like they kill it because they can't have a good match like they can't they need to focus more on like on the feud like if you understand what I mean like the feud is more important than the match but then like it shouldn't it shouldn't be like that it should be like equal I don't know if I'm making much sense but hmm. so next up was Jack Swagger versus Evan Bourne just cuz and Alberto Del Rio comes out and apparently his theme is not just being a heel but being a bully cuz he only picks on like the smaller wrestlers like Evan Bourne, Rey Mysterio, and Jack Wagger wins. Evan Bourne's beat. So Del Rio mentions his attack on Rey Mysterio last time. So he tries to redo that, but on Evan Bourne. But Mark Henry comes out and like the dude, like Alberto Del Rio had like a chair. It was about to hit him, but like fucking Mark Henry just like slapped it and just like and he says. And Del Rio's just like this with his hands, like, ah, that hurt. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah, next. this The next part's actually the most interesting part of the episode. It was CM Punk and the Straight Edge Society doing a speech, and they were going over Raw's history like they were advocating their uh, family values, even though they're wrestlers, which doesn't make sense. You know, so... So CM Punk mentions like The Rock leaving and some other stuff like they do this thing where they're going like the four massively bad horrible things that Raw has ever done 
the number number one being like I think it was like Stone Cold Steve Austin spraying Vince McMahon with alcohol that was awesome and this is probably the part that actually surprised me they start they played the Stone Cold like entrance theme and like it, it started because it seemed punk cute he was like if I mean, the improper use of alcohol, and like, you all want to see Stone Cold come out and spray CM Punk with alcohol, and then like, no, they didn't bring it back, of course they wouldn't bring it back, like, even I thought they would, they brought him back, but, nah, and CM Punk laps it off, like, haha, but then they played the, the Big Show music, and then, um, Big Show comes in, interrupts CM Punk, and he does, he makes fun of him, makes fun of jokes, and then like, he's trying to do this joke where he's trying to make CM Punk laugh, where he's trying to imitate Hulk Hogan. You know how this ends, like, Big Show, a slap, CM Punk, straight as society leaves, beating up, and then the Big Show just smiles, you know. Then the 5 on 5, this is the last part of the night, and, and since this was the build up to like, a uh, night of champions, like, all six champions uh, were there and what happened in the beginning was Chris Jericho purposely got himself eliminated which makes sense you know so everyone else is tired and beat up while he is okay then Edge follows suit and then the part that got, got me was even with three Nexus got beat like all fought like the five of them got beat by three guys I know they lost like Cena, Orton, and Sheamus, they all lost, but they got beat by three guys. Not even three guys, two guys. Because Sheamus didn't eliminate anyone. I don't know. I don't know how, like, they can stay in the business and, like, it's kind of with the same idea. I don't know, like, groups don't the groups they have are not working like the straight edge society they can't beat the big show like one guy and the nexus team they just like individually they get broke like last week i saw last week where they had to fight to stay on nexus they all six of them won but those weren't wins those were pathetic the only like okay the only ones that deserve to be on the team if if there was a team, like, it would probably be, like, Skip Sheffield. Because everyone else sucks. Even Wade Barrett sucks. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, that's Monday Night's Raw's 900th episode. <sighs> Failure.